Hey everybody, Jack the Avid Assistant here. So today I just want to talk a bit about a backup and archival of an edit project in Avid on an offline workflow, well, during the offline edit. So let's start with backups. So backups, well, essentially important 99.9% .9 of the time, um, often aren't as much of a deal, um, you know, for editors to worry about in most cases on larger long form projects for a couple of reasons. Um, a, because you're often working in a facility, um, an edit facility that will be handling that for you. B, that facility will be using an Avid Nexus um, server most of the time. And Nexus slash old ISIS machines are incredibly reliable storage. You know, I haven't really ever seen one fail. Um, personally, I know there's no doubt there has been one that has failed at some point. Um, or at least there will have been a few because they've been around for a while. Um, but it doesn't happen very often. They're fairly reliable and you can hot swap drives in and out and expand storage at will. Uh, they're a great product. But mostly it's also because uh, when you're talking about Avid Media, um, most of the time you're talking about transcoded proxies, MXFs, um, since in you know long form offline, we're rarely ever working with linked media. And you know editors and assistants tend to get chastised for doing so. Um, because then the media isn't being managed by Avid, it's not sort of all centrally together and it can't be archived as quickly and as easily. And these, this Avid media, these MXFs, um, can be recreated for whatever reason if they have to from the masters. And your masters are a totally different story, by the way. Your masters, you know, from the camera and from sound, they will be backed up securely and properly right away. Generally speaking, you know, at least using the, the 3 two, one rule, so they're backed up at least three times um, in two different locations and with at least one of those locations being off-site. So one workflow that we used to use for this when I've worked in a post facility is the DIT backup would come in. DIT's also got a copy. Their drives would come into us. Uh, we would offload everything to our server um, on a secure copy uh, using software called Yoyota. And then we would set Yoyota off to make uh, two different LTO tape backups um, of all of the media. If you're not familiar with LTO tape and wondering why in you know 2023 uh, we're still using tape media, it's because tapes have a much longer shelf life than a hard drive does. You know your typical hard drive will have a shelf life of about three years, whereas an LTO tape can have a shelf life of about 25 to 30 years. So that definitely keeps the insurance companies much happier. So we'd make two LTO copies of all the media, and then we'd give one of these LTO tape copies. Uh, to the production. So they keep it at the production company's offices or, or wherever they want to keep it. And we would keep one, you know, downstairs in the post facility. Um, and then that way there's there's multiple backups. And they're in different places and they're super secure. Um, and we can always recover it from LTO if we have to. Although we'll generally keep it on the server until the job's done. Um, but we have pulled stuff from LTO before, like for previous seasons of a show or something like that. But as we were doing this, we didn't back up the Avid transcodes that we'd made to these LTO tapes as well, because it would just have resulted in, you know, much more space being used. And we're charging the production, by the way, uh, for each one of these LTO tapes that we used, and they're not that cheap. And really, just backing up the Avid media is kind of superfluous. Um, the only advantage it would give you is that, hypothetically, if you wanted to reopen the edit way later after you closed the project, say you'd lot to film online that thought it was finished, um, then your distributor fell through and you were looking for another one months down the line you get a distributor lined up but they'll still buy it on the, on the hook that they can make changes to the edit and you have to restore it. You'd be able to restore all the Avid media in the project really quickly if you had backed up the media and jumped right in but at the same time it's just not really worth it since if push came to shove and you really had to you could restore all of the media and remake transcodes again and, and load it back up. Um, so that would be just creating more work and more backups for yourself. Now, you may be wondering that, yeah, sure, Jack, that's true if you're on a big production or if you're in a facility or, and you've got those kind of resources um, and, and they can all take care of that for you. But what if, you know, I'm cutting it at home? What if I'm cutting a short film? Or what if I'm cutting, you know, something where I'm responsible for it. Well, in that case, it can be definitely good to have a backup and not just have a backup, but just sort of take care of the media. Like I was saying before, an Avid Nexus is an extremely reliable product 
And so when I'm cutting at home, like when I was putting together this um, Avid setup for, for my own use, I wanted a reliable storage solution that I could have all of my Avid media on and my projects that even if I wasn't able to do a full backup of, you know, I could trust that it wasn't going to die on me immediately. And what I can tell you what I went with is a 24 terabyte Thunderbolt 3 uh, RAID drive. So local direct attached storage. It's not networked. It's not a NAS. Um, but it is faster than a NAS. Um, I can't remote into it necessarily unless I leave my Mac to share it and set that up online. I could do it if I really wanted to, but never felt the need. But it's got six enterprise class drives and it's got one drive redundancy. So if one fails, I can swap it out. And so then I've got plenty of space there for my, for my home project. Uh, I've used that across multiple feature films um, as, as well as some you know big projects that they've let me take home and, and work from home to work remotely. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's been, you know, it's working out pretty well for me so far. Now, don't get me wrong, if, if, it's, if it's something really important, if, if, it's, if I'm getting source media from getting masters or something that I'm not going to be able to quickly restore or ask for new transcodes of, um, then I will make a backup. I would buy a drive specific for the occasion. Um, but all I'm saying is, is if you're going to invest in storage that you will be using, um, try to make it as, as reliable as possible. Don't, don't get some cheap USB drives and uh, definitely don't edit off of your internal drives on the machine. Um, you know, you're, and when I say internal drive, I mean your, your startup drive. So if your Windows, your C drive, your Mac, like your Mac HD, um, definitely if you can help it, don't edit off of that. For one thing, your read and write is sort of doubling up because you're reading and writing media as well as reading and writing the OS and files there. And that can slow you down depending on what your drives are. Um, and another, it's just sort of not best practice. It's ideal to have some kind of external solution. Now, if you've got like a Windows Tower or an old cheese grater Mac, you can have inside the machine additional storage and that might work for you. Um, but as long as it's not like a mechanical plug-in HD drive. I once walked into a suite and I saw um, someone trying to render a whole timeline. It was like a 40 minute timeline in Avid. Um, and the media drive they were using was this um, ancient WD uh, USB 2 drive um, mechanical thing. And that was that was just bottlenecking it like crazy because I don't even think it had its own power supply. Um, it was just a, you know, bus powered. So, yeah, that was a bit cringy. So, yeah, reliable storage for the win. Now, that covers backups with Avid Media, um, but I just also want to say a note on Avid Projects. Um, so during the edit, like as soon as that project is made, I would say as a minimum, you'd always want to be having a daily backup of the project. That's just my policy. I'm not saying that's you know, you have to, but regular backups of the project on a separate drive or a separate machine that's not attached to the computer or always plugged into the computer um, is, is good practice. I, I've seen it save a whole edit before, a whole production, because the editor was doing a daily backup to his, his USB flash drive and then he'd take it home. You know, you're saving all those precious decisions, all those precious edits and saves and organizing and everything. So, you know, if, if a, a power surge or, or something happens that fries the, the facility servers or, or your own PC. Again, how I do this is I have my Avid projects here are actually inside of a iCloud synced folder. Um, you can see this little icon here. Um, and I used to use Dropbox, switch to iCloud. It's any sort of cloud service will do. Um, to keep this sort of regularly backed up and up to date. It also means you can download the Avid project somewhere else if you have to. I keep my Avid settings here as well. Um, and I like to copy this just onto a flash drive. Then I'll put it into a dated folder at the end of each day, zip the folder, and then copy it onto a flash drive. So yeah, that, that's how you keep your, those, those precious edits and those precious um, Avid projects secure. Right, now that covers us with backups. Uh, but what about at the end of your project? You've locked it, you've delivered it. Um, and you want to archive it off. You know, it's it's using lots of space and storage now. You don't need it anymore, um, but you don't want to fully delete it in case you have to come back to this. Um, well, in that case, it sort of depends on, you know, uh, a number of factors, like how much storage you have, um, you know, whether you're in a facility, whether you're working at home, 
and you know the likelihood of you coming back to this um, as well and just sort of how much you want to back up really so let me give you a few options on how you could do this um, ranging from you know the bare minimum backing up and saving to you know backing up absolutely everything so the bare minimum that you'd want to archive from your Avid project at the end is probably going to be your locked cut, right? You know, that, that's, that's what you've done in the end. That's what you arrive to. And, you know, if, if it's like a, a film and you do a sequel and you want to have a flashback or something, it's probably, you're probably going to use media that was in the locked cut, right? Um, if you ever need to come back to this for any reason. So let me show you how I'd go back around my timeline of the locked cut. So first of all, I'd give it a good tidy up. You know, I'd name my tracks, sort everything out. Now that should have been done by yourself or your assistant when you're turning over to online, but I digress. Either way, you're definitely going to want this done before you back up so that when you ultimately do have to come back to it, you know where everything is because you might not necessarily recognize it if it's been, you know, four years and you're coming back to a project. So I will have this in a bin on its own, right? And I will then go File, Export. And I'm going to create a new setting here of an AAF. So we're going to want all video and audio tracks. I've got them all selected, but I'm not going to bother with any ticks here. So I'll just use everything. And then under both video and audio, I'm going to tick Consolidate Media. And what this is going to do is it's going to make new versions of every clip on the timeline um, consolidated to just the amount that's used plus uh, any range of handles that you designate. Uh, so this project was done in about 24 frames a second. So um, I'll give us two second handles, which should be plenty if I ever had to tweak something, of 48 frames. You can tell it to render all the effects in the way out too if you really wanted to, so that when you loaded it back up, uh, you didn't have to render anything and all the effects could just be played down. But remember, we're doing the bare minimum right here just now, so we're not going to take that. Then down here, down the bottom under Media Destinations, I'm just going to hit Folder, and use same folder as AAF. And you're going to want to make sure that all these settings I've just said are enabled in both the Video and Audio tabs, and Video and Audio down here, options down here as well. Right, now we're all good, and we could save this. I'm going to call it Consolidate 48. And we could set that off. Now when you do this, like I said, it's creating new clips truncated down to just the media that's being used, plus any handles. Um, so you will have to go through a process here where it'll convert all of these files. It's going to take a little while. Um, you know, and once it's done, your bin that you're exporting here is going to be chock full um, of these .new01 versions of all of your clips. Um, so when this is done, I would just create another bin and dump all those clips into there and just, you know, call it the same as your archival bin underscore media. Something simple like that. But it may shock you to know that I'm not actually going to do multiple archives of this short film here, so I'm just going to cancel this. But before I do, actually, let's take a look at what it looks like at the destination site. So we have this Avid Media Files folder uh, where it's generating all of this Avid Media. So this is where it's putting all of my, you know, consolidated, truncated down clips. Um, and then up the top here, um, next to my Avid Media Files folder, it'll put an AF of that timeline as well, which I'll include in the archive, as well as the Avid bin that contains this sequence. And when I say this sequence, um, I don't mean the one that I exported, but I mean the duplicate sequence that's going to be created uh, by Avid um, after I finish this export, this archive. And it'll just add .exported.01 at the end. And the reason why that's the one I would use in my backup, I mean, you could keep both in the bin, it's not really an issue, um, but the dot .exported one will be natively linking to the new consolidated media that it's just made, whereas the other will be linking to your main Avid media. Right, option number two. Right, so option number two is going to be fairly similar to option number one. I'm going to call this a medium backup. 
So again, we're just going to do a lot to cut, uh, but the difference this time is that we're not going to consolidate the media or truncate it down to handles. We're going to have everything. So the whole clip of all of these clips. So this is only going to be slightly different um, in our AEF settings. So I'm going to set this exporting. I think I've already got the setting here. Copy media. Yeah. So I'll open the options and show you what it looks like. Um, it's just a difference up here. So instead of hitting consolidate, I've said copy all media. And this way it doesn't actually have to create any new converted clips and clog up your bin or anything like that. It's just going to grab the source MXFs that you're currently using and just copy those same ones over to the new destination. Um, it's actually a great way as well to send media to people um, because, uh, you know, you can uh, copy all of the all of the media that's in a timeline. So if you want to send the Avid media for a bunch of clips uh, in your Avid, you can actually just drag and drop them, throw them on a timeline, and then use this setting to send them the Avid media. Much faster than doing reveal file. Although if you hang around, I'm going to show you an another even better way to do that shortly. Oh, come on, Jack. Nobody likes spoilers. And if you wanted to really have everything here in our, in our little stepped up archival, you could take your little render effects here under video and under audio. You can say include rendered effects and render all the ones that are there. Um, that way you've got a bit more of a thorough backup. Um, you know, if you had a soft lock, really, really hate that term, of an edit and... Um, uh, you know, you might be coming back to it, but you really need to free up some space and you've already moved on to your next project. Um, you know, this this would allow you to bring the edit back, you know, very quickly uh, and make some basic trims or retiming, should you need to. Right, so that's showing you um, our small and, and medium options for archival. Um, where we're just doing the lot timeline we're not saving anything else at all in terms of media. Um, and you would just have to remember to also copy in your backup of your Avid project into, into your archival folder as well. And we can start, you know, clearing out all of our Avid media for the project, you know, d cleaning up our storage drive. But before we look at that, I've got two more variations of backup to show you. And the third one um, that we're going to look at now is the one that I've probably done the most um, on network TV series. Um, I worked at a company called the South Pacific Pictures um, on five different um, TV projects, um, you know, seasons of a show on different shows. And at the end of the season, when we were finished, uh, how we'd go about it is we do the one of the backups I just showed you for the locked cuts of each individual episode. And another thing that we would do is we create a bin um, called generics. And in here, we would just make a bunch of sequences um, of useful material um, from that season um, that we could potentially use in future seasons. So, for example, um, exterior shots of your lead character driving around the town in their car or um, establishing shots of the town that the story is set in. You know, your main character's house, stuff like that. You know, that type of thing. Um, which, you know, could be useful in future seasons rather than having to reshoot that stuff again. It's stuff that's not going to change. And so while we may already have this organized um, in the Avid, um, the way we do it for the backup is just to make a sequence for each different one of these categories. Right, now, once we had collated all these generics, um, you know, all these different sequences of, of different types of generics that we're going to want to recover later, um, we can then just select them all um, and export these sequences with our same uh, consolidate or um, copy uh, archival AF export presets. Uh, one thing to note though, if you're going to do this, make sure that you have use marks and use selected tracks unticked whenever you're exporting batches of sequences. Um, because occasionally if you've went through a whole bunch of sequences, I've noticed your selected tracks can reset, you know, your track monitored can shift. Um, and so it's, it's perfectly fine to, to do it on the regular if you're just exporting one sequence. Um, but if you're selecting a bunch and setting them to export, um, I would just make sure those are unticked and then, then you'll get everything. Um, just a bit safer that way. Right, now, lastly, back up everything. Um, so this is the not very space-saving economical version, but you would have everything. You could, you know, bring back the project. If you wanted to transport the project somewhere else, or maybe you're going to start using it to create your own a YouTube channel um, to, to teach Avid stuff and you wanted to save the material to use for that, you know, that would be one reason to hold on to past projects that you finished more than two years ago but you still reference all the time. 
And there's a couple of ways to go about this. For the first one, we'll stick to, you know, inside of Avid. So I go Tools, Media Tool, uh, which personally, I really like. And for this, you're just going to select on the left the media drive that your storage is referencing. Uh, so for me, uh, this is Falcon Bay. That's my RAID um, storage solution. And then on the right, you're going to select the project or projects. Um, just hold shift to, you know, shift click and select multiple. And these are the projects that, um, you know, your media was created in. Now, this isn't necessarily an Avid project as well. If your media was created in DaVinci Resolve, this would be the name of that DaVinci Resolve project. Now, it shouldn't be too complicated, really. So, for example, here, um, I have a whole bunch of different projects that begin with the name Borderland. That you can safe to assume these are all from a project I've worked on called Borderland. So I can just select all of them um, and get all the media created in all of those. So some of this might be stuff that I've imported into the project, um, like uh, audio or graphics. Some of it may be um, stuff that DITs have made. You know, like there's a second unit one here. So this would be like a, a separate transcoding DaVinci project, probably and made by a different DIT for the second unit. Um, so if you just select all of these, you'll get everything for Borderline. But I'm going to select the the treasurer stuff. And once you've got everything selected there, um, you can then so you can then select a filter here of what type of media you want the media tool to bring up. Um, so this will be so by default it's selected master and linked clips. So like your main clips that you would see in um, in your bins but you can also have it bring up you know rendered effects and mac keys you know your render files um, as well as uh, other media files that, that you happen to have brought in and then i'll hit ok and i'll watch the media tool is going to go through it's going to search out all the media all those mdb files that are inside our mxf folders all the catalogs avid has of all of the media anything tagged to those projects at all um, and it's going to create like basically a bin in the media tool and add all of that media there. So here it is. So we are viewing uh, 3,474 clips. Holy moly. Once you have all your media here, you can select it all and then do a clip, consolidate, and you'll be able to consolidate it to an external drive um, that you've plugged in just for this purpose. Now, bear in mind, if you do it this way, it's going to export it to an Avid Media Files folder on the root level of that drive. So if that drive already has Avid Media on it, it could get mixed in. It could be a bit murky. So, well, this is one way to do it. It's not my preferred way. Let me show you that. My preferred way actually uses a third-party tool called MDV, which is just freaking amazing. Um, and it could be used for all of the archival methods that we've looked at thus far. Now, one thing to note is that while MDV is a fantastic tool, um, it is not really supported in Windows. Uh, there is a Windows version, but it is extremely old, and one had reached out to the developer, um, who is an editor, by the way, uh, Valentin, who, um, he's absolute legend, but he does this in his spare time, um, and he's coded this and just gave it out to the world for free. So he can't really complain at all. Um, he's made the choice not to, you know, continue updating this for Windows because, you know, he's more of a Mac user himself. But if you are a Mac user, um, then this tool is an absolute must-have for all Avid users. Let me show you how it works. So basically, it's it kind of looks a bit like the media tool where it loads a whole bunch of media here and then we can decide what to do with it. Um, and when we first launch it, it's looking very bare. Um, so to start populating it, we have to hit what he calls the big red button. So hit the big red button. Um, then it's going to show you all available volumes. So that's my Mac HD, don't want that. And I'll only leave ticked my RAID array since that's the one with all my media on it. And then I hit OK. And now it's scanning all the MDB files on that volume to detect all of the Avid media. And then it's going to populate uh, this area here with absolutely everything Avid cataloged. Here it is here, and it's given me a report of all of the projects that um, this media is tagged to, how many items are tagged to each project, and the media file size for all of those items on a per project basis. So it's already really useful. And we can export this summary as well, just if you just wanted to 
um, see what was using up space on your drive. So already like barely started using it and this is already awesome and really useful. So don't want, we don't want to hit export summary. Um, we're just going to express our true sentiments right now and just hit wow because wow. And before we can start doing anything with this media, uh, we're going to need to filter it to just what we need. And there's so many different options and ways to do this here. Um, so we'll start with the simplest. So let's hit filter up here. And here's all of our projects. I'll just hit deselect all. And then say I wanted everything to do with the treasurer. I'll tick all projects named after the treasurer. And then we can see in the background as I tick all these you can see up here, if you look at filtered item size, it instantly changes to load only the media tagged to those selected projects. Awesome. I can then close that, and I feel confident that this is all of my Avid media. I can see the file name, I can see what the clip name would be in the Avid bin, the file size, the project it's attached to, pretty much all the metadata um, here, you know, frame rate, file path. It's, it's really great. It's awesome. Uh, then if I wanted to do an archive and copy all this media somewhere, all I need to do is do a command A to select it all. And then come over here to create action. Right, hang on a second. So in the initial record, I actually neglected to talk more about this little window here. I only go on to talk about how you can copy this media uh, for archival purposes and, you know, copying the media elsewhere. But I actually really want to point out here how the, the two options underneath copy, move and delete. Now we can move this media elsewhere, like cut and paste rather than a copy paste. And we can also delete the media. Now this is my primary way of deleting Avid MXF media, particularly post project, post archival for tidying up my raid. This is how I'll do it. And it also allows me to isolate just the biggest stuff and delete those if I just want to free up space, stuff that I'm not using because it gives me much more information um, than I can get within Avid uh, very quickly. Um, so this could be a really, really great way um, for you to tidy up your media storage uh, post-archival. Right, you go. Back to the video. And then we just say we want to copy the media, set a file path of where we want it to go to, and like the good thorough editor that Valentin is, he gets us to tick, yes, I'm sure, before we do anything. Love you, love it, love you making people check their work, mate. And remember, we can even have it automatically create project folders and separate uh, into the projects, create MXF folders in those. Um, I don't want to do that because I've got a bunch of different projects for the treasurer and I just want to get all the media together. So I would untick those. And as soon as I hit go, it's going to start copying all of the media into there. Neat, right? Let me show you. Go. And then we're copying. See in my archival folder over here, MDV. There's all my media appearing here. How awesome is that? So simple and tagged to a specific project. Now, just to show off this tool even more here, right? Another way that we could filter this is by a bin. So I could go filter and I can say intersect entire database with bins and then I can grab say my lot cut bin select it and it's already filtered out most stuff so we can see here our selected items came to 364 gigs our filtered items is 126 so this is only showing me the filtered so then if I grab this and did the copy um, I'm only getting the Avid media from that lot cut timeline. So this would be the same as if we did our AAF copy all media, but just a bit simpler and easier really, um, because we don't have to deal with AAF exports or selected tracks or, or an AAF really, um, just everything that's referenced in that bin. But even better than that, you can use a bin to take away results from this filter. So let me give you an example of when I found this really useful. On a project um, that I worked on called Shadow in the Cloud, really, really awesome film. Uh, we were regularly sending timelines and Avid Media to uh, Weta Digital because they were doing the, the effects for it. And uh, when we would send them, you know, a bunch of new media for new uh, VFX plates, uh, we would save the bin somewhere on the desktop and we'd, we'd just give it an underscore date, you know, say what it is. Then when we went to do this the next time, uh, we could just select the sequence, the, the chunk of the film that we want to send them. And then we come to filter up here. 
we do our intersect entire database with bins um, in order to get just the section we want, like we like we just showed. Then we go subtract bins from result and selecting a bin here and putting it in would allow us to take away media from the filtered result. So if there's media that we've already sent and we've got a bin record of what we've already sent, we could throw that into there and then we don't have to send it again. You'd only send the updated Avid media. This is really, really invaluable when you're working via remote, um, but you're using local storage and you're trying to send media uh, to your editor or to um, your assistant or you know someone else you're collaborating with with Avid Media um, because you don't have to send them everything every time, only what's new and updated in the cut since you last sent them something. It's freaking awesome, man. It's, it's really, really good. Um, this tool is it's free. Um, the download link to get it will be down below. And I would highly recommend that all Avid users using Mac um, get this app because it's super, super duper awesome. Thank you again, uh, Valentin. And Valentin also makes an awesome uh, plugin, AVX plugin for Avid uh, called Blend X, uh, giving you blend transitions and blend modes within Avid that resemble some other apps and also works on the latest versions of Media Composer and Mac OS. Um, and it's, it's just really, really awesome. And let me just say that while these tools are free, uh, there is a PayPal link on his site if you feel like uh, donating and um, supporting the, this, these awesome projects that the Valentine does for all of us. It really is a public service, man. He should have some kind of medal or something. And yeah, I think that covers us for today, guys. So um, uh, if you liked the video, maybe give it a like, you know, check out that other video that's up there. And, you know, maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's your choice. Completely, completely free of your choice. You know, I'll just be here watching all of you and seeing who does and doesn't. You know, so just, just think about that when you ignore that like button. So, see you next time.